Hey there, this is Cowdog again. I'm going to uh, show you guys the inside of my Atari Lynx 2 with a Raspberry Pi 2 inside. So my other video actually kind of went through an overview of, of what was on the outside and kind of showed off some demos of it working. And uh, this one I'm going to show you just kind of uh, how I placed everything inside and uh, how that all kind of turned out. Um, like I said on the bottom here you've got the uh, Pi 2 exposed if you've got the battery door off. And then the top, of course, we've got all the original ports and everything. So I've already unscrewed the uh, four screws that hold everything in. And let's just go ahead and crack this thing open. And uh, the wires are a little tight, so it's going to be a little difficult here just because I didn't want to have a lot of excess of wire. And let's see, there we go. I'll probably actually, when I do another one of these or I redo this, I'll probably actually go ahead and uh, put some connectors on things so things are easier to take apart. Not that I really should be getting in here a whole lot. So on the bottom, or actually I guess this is the top half of the shell, the uh, you've got your uh, 3.5 inch reversing car TFT backup monitor. Um, that's an Amazon monitor. It's about 15, 16 bucks. Uh, like I said, this one actually worked out pretty good. It seems to power up just fine off of the uh, power boost. And the power boost, which is over here, this little guy here, um, outputs about 5.2 volts. So I think that's why this is working okay. Uh, I think on straight 5 volts this wouldn't work perfectly. And if, if you need to actually bypass the internal regulator, which is right here, you could actually remove this chip and then run your power lines straight into some of these pads and actually run this straight off of 5 volts. These are designed for car voltage, so about 12 to 13.8 volts. Uh, my my uh, board didn't actually have the, the buttons on it, so it actually has a little separate little pad that plugs in right here, which is kind of nice because I can remove it. I don't need the circuitry in here. The stock settings are actually pretty good, but later on if I want, I could actually plug this in and relocate the board, like maybe underneath over here or something, and drill some holes on the outside. But again, I like keeping things stock, so I didn't mess with it. This is an original Link speaker. This is a 16-ohm um, it's nothing fantastic. In fact, I think I need to swap this out with a little bit newer speaker uh, for probably an 8 ohm. Another option is use smaller speakers and maybe just mount two of them side by side so you have stereo, even though, you know, Lynx games aren't stereo, but other things on the emulators are. So you can kind of trace everything back here, like I showed you earlier. This is the original Lynx audio circuitry board. So it's got this is the Comlinks connector, the uh, auto headphone jack, the volume potentiometer, and then the, the pair of LM386. Uh, op amps or actually audio amps. Uh, I actually, these are new capacitors. I basically recapped it since I figured, hey, you know what, it's an old thing. I'm just going to put new caps on it. I have a bunch because I repair Lynxes. So if you have an old Lynx and you need recap or, or repairs, I can do that. Um, so I, I also went ahead and uh, I, I glued the, the original little mounting hole leg back onto this because I actually cut it off when I did. And I, I like having the extra stability. So it's as hot glued in, and it's it's fairly stable. I think it could use a little bit better securing methods. Uh, maybe I'll drill a hole in here and mount some uh, standoffs in here. But the wiring's a little um, interesting. I actually wired the uh, this is the positive output from one of the many outputs of the uh, power boost here. So the five volt out line runs over into the uh, I think this is pin six on an LM386. So that's uh, positive voltage. As long as this has got power, it, the rest of the board distributes it to everything, all the active components that need it. This is the actual uh, line out from the Raspberry Pi. It's wired to kind of your left and right in. This is the these two capacitors here are actually some decoupling caps that are in front of the amplifier. So I just left the caps out and just soldered this right in. So basically, what happens is the audio signal travels straight into here, hits the volume potentiometer, and then runs on into the uh, amplifiers. And then from the amplifier, it basically heads to the headphone jack. And then underneath here, I can't show you because it's it's glued in place, but I've wired the speaker positive out to a uh, one of the pins on the headphone jack. And then also there's a ground point. I just soldered basically. There's actually a ground bus that kind of runs along the outer rim right here. And I soldered uh, two different ground wires to that trace. And uh, one of them goes to the the actual underside of the Raspberry Pi here to a uh, the headphone jack on it to line out. I found if I use ground on another 
part, like on the GPIO header or somewhere else on the Raspberry Pi or even on the power boost, I get signal problems. I get a lot more noise. And I've heard other people saying the same thing with the Raspberry Pi, that it's a little trickier for, for the audio. Um, I don't really like the integrated audio on the board. Honestly, it's noisy. It doesn't do a great job. It's, it's okay. So what I really want to do is I'm going to use a USB sound card and then I'll tie it into this. Or what I really am thinking about doing is scrapping this, building my own circuit board that just has the same spacing, putting my own jacks here, and then using a modern amplifier that runs on lower voltage that's a lot less noisier, like a Class D uh, digital amp. Uh, again, I'm sorry about the uh, shaky cam here. This is just a cell phone. So the other things you can see here, like I was saying, you've got the Adafruit 500C power boost, and that's wired. The enable and ground pins are wired up to this power switch, so when you turn it this way, it breaks the connection, turns the unit on. You've got your 5 volts out down here, 5 volts out here. This 5 volt ties right into Raspberry Pi's uh, pin 2, and then the ground, I think I actually used, I think, pin 9. Uh, a lot of people go with pin 6. There's a lot of grounds, so you can kind of pick whatever you feel like. I just had actually pin six already wired into the uh, this uh, pin header. So that's the other thing that all these GPIO pins are wired up to a uh, the original flat panel connector that connects to the Lynx's body, which you can see this kind of goes on into the Lynx. Sorry, this is kind of hard to show, but yeah, you can see this is the original flat panel connector, which which actually is the flex circuit, which has all of the buttons and. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice is if you are inserting and removing that a lot, those are kind of like graphite coated traces. They eventually rub off. So the way I kind of fix it is you can cut a millimeter off of the end of it every every time you, you run low on, on traces. This connector is getting pretty small. So I'm going to have to resort to either repairing the traces on that at some point if I run into it by using say like a silver conductive pin or eventually just replace the flex circuit. Best Electronics has flex circuits that are about 10 bucks so not a big deal if it breaks or I can salvage it from another Lynx. Uh, lithium ion power. This is a uh, 3.7 volt 2500 milliamp pack and it just has a nice little JST connector that plugs straight into that power boost. The power boost is a really nice little unit because it takes your lipo cell and it boosts it up to 5.2 ish volts and uh, with a micro usb on the input you can charge or uh, play it either way so really what what happens is you can actually use this while it's charging it's outputting things this unit is a 500 milliamp charge but it can draw i think has a current limiter of like two amps or so for output, so I've got plenty of draw. I can pull off the battery, the amperage I need. And I'm guessing with that screen and the Raspberry Pi uh, 2 that I'm probably pulling near an amp under full load. And uh, that, that'll drain this battery probably in a couple hours. Uh, the charger won't keep up with that. That, that. So from a design perspective, I probably would pick a different charger. Uh, I'd probably pick something like the 1000C or maybe some other options. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I may actually do a version of this with just the original AA cells across the bottom. Uh, forego all this and just use some basic, uh, some nice switching 5 volt regulators. Uh, you can see I actually have a wireless dongle and a keyboard dongle plugged into this. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that here shortly because I'm going to wire two USB connectors straight into this and make a back panel for this to have external USBs. And then I can just plug in dongles or controllers as I see fit when I need them and they're not going to draw any power because really these are probably drawing another 100, 150 milliamps just sitting there most of the time and that's, that's power you're sucking off the battery. That there's no need to do that. Um, pretty much everything else, you know, it's, it's as you see, I, I try to keep the wiring pretty clean. I, I wound up in a pretty good position, not too much of a rat's nest. Everything is, is fairly well uh, secure. I actually would like to move on to putting a uh, some sort of like a screw standoff that I can epoxy into the case and then have nice, nice screws to actually attach everything. The other thing I'm considering is just desoldering a lot of these things off the pie that you don't need. I mean, I've got a lot of room in this in this case. The nice thing about the links is it's really tall, it's fat. You can put a lot of componentry in here, so you could really stuff all sorts of other things in here if you really wanted to go crazy with it. But there's no reason to have all those things in there, so I may just remove them. And then the nice part, probably for the future, is if I desolder this pin header, I can make nice clean connections straight to the board and make them a nice hard solder connection. All right, now it's if I put some standoffs and some screws, 
I could probably end up making it to where you could unplug and plug things pretty easily. But the reality of it is, is you're not going to remove the Pi once it's in there. I mean, it's in there for good. And uh, with the external ports, you can use it to do everything. So you can hook it up to a monitor, mouse, keyboard, everything you need to do. The only downside, of course, is the SD card, which is buried right here. So you could probably just, you can see, I could, maybe I can, yeah, it's really hard to kind of pop that out. You can, but it would be really kind of tough to do. So another option is I could cut out that plastic right in there and um, have some accessibility on the back. Sorry to ramble, that is another 10 minute long video of the insides. I just thought I'd give you a shot and show you how everything's all configured should you want to build yours. Again, I'm probably going to go ahead and build some more. So if you're interested and want one of these, just let me know. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.